And uh, as indicated, uh, the parents of the late Lee Matthews, Robin Sharon, uh, they are at the uh, Johannesburg Correctional Facility for that parole hearing of Donovan Moodley. And we cross now to our reporter, Criselda Lewis. Um, uh, we'll just get back to her in a short while. I actually just saw a message there, Leanne, from yeah. Criselda. So they are ready. Uh, we have seen them there. Uh, Rob Matthews, at least, wasn't shot, so he'll be speaking to Criselda shortly. And if you remember, Remember, uh, this one is a bit strange, yeah. at least because we spoke to Rob Matthews, um, I think it was last year, mm. when, when this whole there was a whole parole up. issue that came up and then it was subsequently shelved and now it's back on the card. So uh, looking forward to understanding what is happening, the department saying that he has served yeah. um, the required an, an amount of time that then qualifies him eligible. for... Um, parole. parole. But uh, I don't know. It, it just all seems very strange. Then why did they not go through with it last year? In the previous year? one. In the previous so one. That's everything we're going to actually uh, um, be getting to understand as, uh, as this happens today. So uh, as we say, um, uh, Chriselle de Lewis is there. We'll be crossing to her in a few minutes time just to get an understanding of the history of this case, because I mean, this particular case, it really gripped a nation. It, it, it honestly did. It was a massive story, as all these stories are, but this is one that, that really, really everybody was following, and it was just a devastating ending to a story. Um, and you know, the, the, the problem is, I think there's just never been an admission of guilt and the feeling, you know, yeah. and that's, that has been, I think, the sticking point. And that was when, when we did have that conversation with Rob, because I do remember clearly, in fact, I yes. think you spoke to yes. him. Um, that was one of the things, the was, fact that he never showed that was remorse. It. Yeah. And also, there are still holes in that story yeah. because he abducted Lee, remember, and there was a time that lapsed uh, where he kept her um, hostage. So what happened during that time? All those sorts of things are still unknown. And I think uh, that also kind of keeps the parents and the family, her loved ones, from finding Full closure. Yeah, I mean, you look at these photographs and these visuals of uh, of Donovan Mudley, uh, uh, you know, and juxtapose this uh, at the time of when he did it. He was a young boy at that time. Uh, you look at him now, and he is, you know, he's a, he's a grown adult. But the reality is, is this story. I mean, as we have been reporting, I mean, just in a nutshell, if you have indeed forgotten the the basis of the story, um, Lee Matthews was kidnapped. Um, by Donovan Matthews, put into his boot, taken away. A ransom was then, of course, demanded. 50,000 rand was paid. Mm. However, uh, Donovan killed her, shot her at close range before she was ever released. And this, you know, this is the, the basis of this case. And, of course, he is now up for parole. So, Indeed. Yeah, just to fill you in on that story. So um, this is an interesting one. And uh, we, of course, await to see what actually transpires during this parole hearing whether there will be any sort of movement and of course the family because they are central in all of these proceedings and um, heart really goes out to them um, all these years it seems like you know it, it just never ends secondary trauma uh, when all of these things just are brought back they come up mm. again mm. and uh, my heart really really goes out to them. absolutely all right so as we say this is uh, where we're going to be going in a short while so uh, if uh, if you'll please stay with us we're going to take a very quick break and then it's off to that uh, that appearance and uh, Chris Elder will cover that if, if I may just quickly mm. before we go to that break just in terms of developments in the Lindy West Sisulu um, presidency story. I see that statement has come through. Yeah. Remember, we've been uh, uh, reading it in the news that there will be a response within 24 hours. Uh, well, the statement has come through from the minister. So okay. what we'll do is when we have time, um, after Criselda's crossing, we will come back and we'll try and read some of that for you. But I believe she is, in fact, uh, ready for us, Good. Criselda, right now. So let's take you to the Johannesburg uh, Correctional Services Center. There we have Criselda, and uh, this, of course, in anticipation of the parole hearing of convicted murderer uh, Donovan Moodley. Criselda, good morning. It has, of course, been a busy one, but let's hand it over to you. Well, Sakina, it's certainly going to be a very busy one. And in fact, you've got uh, quite a number of media houses uh, camped outside here, the uh, Johannesburg Correctional Services uh, uh, Centre. As you'd know, 
This case had been dominating the headlines uh, for close to uh, two decades now. Lee Matthews' killer, Donovan Moodley, is looking to be a free man. He's seeking parole after serving only 15 years of his life sentence. The Matthews family expected uh, to make representations to the parole board today here at the Johannesburg Correctional Services Centre. So you'd recall that Moodley had abducted Lee Matthews from Bond University. That was back in 2004. He'd held her captive and demanded ransom money from her family. After receiving that, he then shot her dead. So in less than uh, two decades now, and uh, Donovan Moodley is uh, making an attempt at freedom, the parents of uh, Lee Matthews, Rob and Sharon, will be uh, here at the, the parole uh, hearing uh, together with the legal team and the support of uh, women and men against uh, child abuse. In fact, Rob and Sharon Matthews join me here this morning at the start of this uh, parole hearing, and uh, they're joining me at this moment. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. and Mrs. Matthews. Thanks indeed for taking time to speak to us here on SABC News. Close to two decades now, Mr. Rob Matthews, that... Uh, your daughter was killed, and the man who was convicted of her murder is this morning looking or looking to be free. There's a process that must be followed. How do you feel as a family? When I woke up this morning, um, I had that feeling the day we were going to Lee's funeral. It felt just like that. So all the closure that we thought we were going to get when the life sentence was pronounced and then the subsequent re application for him trying to get out, trying to change his sentence, change his story, that was traumatic enough. But today's, today's a tough one. Today's a tough one. You've always maintained as a family that uh, Donovan Moodley never showed any remorse for killing your daughter. And today, that... Uh, oral representation will be made by you as a family. I really don't want to pry too much, but what will you be telling the parole board this morning? Well, we, we need to tell the parole board about the lies that Moodley has continued to tell all through the last 16, 17 years. The fact that there's been no tangible remorse at what we can see. And, and how dangerous an individual he is, because at face value, he may seem to be benign, but behind that, from our experience, there's a very devious and dangerous individual. And really, at this stage, has no right to get parole. And, and we hope the system and the parole board can see that. And that's what we would like to highlight. Mrs. Matthews, I'd like to bring you in as well. How do you feel this morning as Lee's mom? I saw you a bit teary-eyed this morning. This must be incredibly difficult for you as a family. I'm actually quite scared um, to be faced with your daughter's killer and only be a few metres away. It, it feels a bit as if I'm going to meet a, a monster. I'm, I'm, abs I'm petrified. Rob isn't, but I am scared and I, I feel almost intimidated and I shouldn't be intimidated because he's evil. So I am apprehensive, but I think that I think that we'll get through it. We have to get through it. We've gone through the death of Lee, the funeral, so this is actually going to be fine. And what would you say to the justice system in this country? It is you, families like, I guess, millions of others, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, hundreds of thousands of others, who are pinning their hopes on the justice system in this country to do right. I know that uh, Mr. Rob Matthews, when he spoke uh, to SABC yesterday, he said he felt that there had been more uh, prominence being put on uh, the offender than on the victim and their families. I think that's very true. I think we've got a good, strong justice system. I don't think it's always been followed correctly. Um, I think we've got very first world laws, but I don't know if it's always followed through. I think there's so many people. We are fortunate we can actually fight this. Gee, there must be these hundreds of thousands that can't fight this. Imagine walking down the street and you see your rapist or somebody who's killed your daughter or son, and, and there's nothing you can do, and nobody will listen. Nobody.
What is your message to that justice system today? Pardon? What is your message to that justice system today? It's just got to work. It's just people have to just do what they can and, and just do their best. I, I, I think the justice system, the tail end of the justice system, and we'll be in a better position to comment after the parole hearing, yeah, and yeah. I'd love to make those comments then. Yeah. But as we stand here now, that's the area that we think needs attention. For example, if the media aren't allowed to be part of the process, well, that's the very core of our democracy, the media. And, and, and I find it very difficult to understand that. But maybe there's a reason, and maybe we can talk to you afterwards and, and give you some feedback as to how we see it. You do wonder if you, you go in court and people are allowed to come to court and watch it, etc. But when there's a parole hearing, it, it's so secretive. I mean, in but fact, maybe you shouldn't we'll be, be out here. Sorry, you know. yeah. you, you, why are you out here? You treat it so badly, it's, it's ridiculous. Mm. You kind of wonder, what's everybody hiding? No, I'm mm. just... Um, yeah. uh, Mr. Rob and Sharon Matthews, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us. I think this uh, just moments before, of course, you'll head into that uh, parole uh, hearing. We understand that uh, it will be taking place uh, from 9 o'clock. Yeah. Is there any indication about how long yeah. your present representations will be? What is the status? Yeah. Haven't no. a clue what's going to happen. But, but I, I think we need to go. I'd hate yeah. to be late for the parole hearing. And thank you so much for thank your you interest. So All right. Thank you very much, uh, Rob and uh, Sharon Matthews. Just moments uh, before they're about to head into uh, that uh, oral representation that they will make to the parole board this morning. Donovan Moodley, uh, the killer of their daughter, Lee Matthews. Remember that this case uh, dragging since uh, early 2000 where uh, Lee Matthews had been abducted from Bond University and a ransom, as I indicated there, Sakina and Leanne demanded after the family had paid that Lee Matthews uh, was uh, shot and killed. Uh, uh, Women and Men Against uh, Child Abuse, the organization, are also here today to support uh, the Matthews family. We'll be having a live interview with them at 9 o'clock this morning, so you can stay tuned uh, to our sister program, The Agenda. The media, of course, not being allowed into this process. I don't think I recall, Leanne and Sakina, ever the media being allowed into a parole process, but a lot of uh, interest in this particular case. Uh, This is a story that has dominated the headlines since it broke uh, way back there in early 2000. So whatever the outcome of this case will be, this family believes that they never had any closure. They believe that Donovan Moodley, who is their daughter's killer, who is seeking uh, a chance at freedom by going through uh, this uh, parole process, they're hoping that that that, that does not happen. They believe that uh, the justice system uh, should play its part in this instance and not set him free. Right, Priscilla Lewis, thank you very much at the Johannesburg Correctional Centre and uh, absolutely right and spot on on the issue that uh, this would probably be one of the first occasions that we're actually going to have the opportunity to watch a parole hearing live. So this no, is some- we won't. We're not going to. No. Sorry, I beg your pardon. We're not yeah. going to. So this is the this is the, one of those. We're issues not allowed that we're in. Never allowed to see and these never. things. Never. Yes. But obviously, we were keeping you uh, very updated as to what is happening with regard to parole hearings. But I mean.